Being an artist whose primary source of income is the internet, it's very lonely, right? Like, you never get to meet most of your customers in person, and so you don't really get to see the impact of your work. There was this clear need of a bunch of creative people, and they needed that next level of community. We have so many great ideas in Queens, and I saw an opportunity to create a community space where we could take people who are makers and have ideas for businesses and ideas for community programs and really just foster that that network, that community. That comes about through the store, which is the current iteration of Queens Collaborative. It comes about through workshops and events that we would like to host um, and sort of teach and coach and share this knowledge that we all kind of have collectively. And it comes through creating spaces for shared resources and shared tools where we can sort of help each other out. Originally, Queens Collaborative did a survey and we sent it to our networks, mostly people in Astoria because that's where most of us live, and we asked them, what kind of business do you have? What kind of support would you want in a community like this? Overwhelming majority of people said, selling my stuff is difficult. There are places that are pop-ups where you, the artist, have to be there the whole time. You have to bring your table, your chair, all your merchandise. We thought if we have a place that makes it easier for you to be able to have your things in a physical store, but you don't have to be there. That's one thing we could solve through something like Queens Collaborative. You know, this store is representing everything in Queens from artists, makers, and crafters. So that's why, you know, we jumped on and we're like, whatever you want, whatever you need, we're in. It is kind of just this new nascent thing. It's not like we sat down one day and said, okay, now we're Queens Collab. It's just kind of been building organically and we're honestly still figuring out like who has what role. We're just a group of people who care about something. So I had to go into business together. <laughs> Everyone who participates in Queens Collaborative uh, our vendors in the store, we call them vendor members, right? They have ownership over the space too. So it's not just that they're suppliers, right? We're not just buying things from them to sell. We want them to participate in the store dynamic as well. I know that for the full experience of being an artist and of making stuff, that can't exist purely online. It has to exist in both places. And what COVID has given us the chance to do is be extremely thoughtful about what physical interactions are and how meaningful they can be. We have an open application for artists. Anyone can apply to participate. We have a team of people who review those applications and those are representatives from the different vendors that are here, members of our organizing team, members of the broader Queens community. And we prioritize people who come from diverse backgrounds. We prioritize people who don't have very established businesses right we want people who are trying to kind of figure it out and are in their earlier stages so every time you come into the store you will be seeing new and different artists as well i know for for the next sort of phase we're in this beautiful store um, we really want to amplify the work of all these awesome artists and makers and we want to continue to build a community and really learn what that looks like so how do we share labor and responsibilities how do we bring each of our own kind of unique ideas and how do they fit together? It's really important to us to really work cooperatively, which means, you know, coming to agreements, making compromises, and we're really just figuring all of that out too. No one person is the boss. We're all working together. We now have a team of about eight people who are organizing weekly, like many hours a week to make this happen. And now that the store is open, we hope to bring more people into that process and we really can't do it alone, especially in these times when so many businesses are closing. The Rolling Library, Queens Liberation, and Collider Space are here as well to like help run the shop with Queens Collaboratives. It's four organizations based in Queens in different areas of Queens that came together to make this store possible. We're much stronger together. When I talk to other vendors here in Queens Collab, one of the things that keeps coming up is how much people didn't even realize they needed this how until they came in here and they saw their stuff on their shelf and they saw these other artists in the community, they didn't know. They thought they were on this island of like, I'm creating, I'm working towards this thing. And instead, now it's, we are creating. We are building this together. And 
a rising tide is gonna raise all of our ships. It would be amazing to see a store like this in Jackson Heights, back at least in my neighborhood, or in Corona, where, where Mark is from, because those are places where we need that artistic kind of representation. We have a secret vision that we would really like to see come, which is a very large uh, space in Queens, which would have room for a complete market, the retail store, spaces for artist studios, like a dark room for photography, anything that people brought to the table we could bring into the space. I think ultimately we will be successful if we build community within the creative community in Queens and give everyone who's participating the opportunity to say, this is what would be really valuable for me and I'm ready to do the work to make that happen. Queens, we like to do things a little differently. 